This is how you can make a Discord bot using RoboJS, so let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I would like to say that you can actually go ahead and create a Discord app using RoboJS for WavePlace October event and earn rewards like Nitro, limited edition t-shirts, cash prizes, and more. RoboJS is a file-based framework for Discord.js, similar to how Next.js servers react. It lets you create Discord bots and activities in seconds, as well as web servers, backend and frontend, as well as microservices, featuring native TypeScript support, an extendable built-in KV database, and an ecosystem of templates and plugins for instant feature addition. RoboJS packs a lot into 800 kilobytes with zero dependencies plus free hosting via RoboPlay and much more. The links to RoboJS and Hacktoberfest will be in the description below. And with that, let's go ahead and get into coding a Discord bot using RoboJS. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and, and do is we're gonna go over to the Discord developer portal and we're gonna go ahead and create a new application. And we're just gonna go ahead and give it a name. And then after we go ahead and do that, you can go ahead and agree to the developer terms and you can go ahead and create it. All right, so within this, we can go ahead and set up the front end of our Discord bot so you can can add a description um, we could just say bot description uh, you could add a profile we can just do this for now you could add tags you could add a terms of service a privacy policy just like in any discord bot you can update any of these features then after that let's go ahead and actually go over to bots so the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is reset our token here so to do this you just have to go ahead and click reset um, and you're actually going to want to go ahead and copy this token because we're going to have to paste it into our discord bot in just a minute so once you go ahead and click reset token just go ahead and click yes do it and then you'll have a token that you can actually go ahead and copy now go ahead and save this so that we can access it later but don't share with anybody because if you do they'll be able to access your discord bot so after we go ahead and save that we can actually go ahead and enable some features so let's go ahead and check on all of these intents that's going to give your bot access to a bunch of different information that's going to be useful when you're actually programming features into your discord bot um, you will have to turn these off if you get to 100 servers or you'll have to apply for them but as of now as a smaller bot or as a new bot it's good to turn these on then let's go ahead and go over to OAuth 2 and we can go ahead and create a URL to add the bot to our servers. So we're going to go ahead and select bot here and then let's just go ahead and give it the admin permission so it has everything and it's going to be a guild install so we can actually add it to the server and we can go ahead and copy this. All right so now I'm in the server I want to add it to let's just go ahead and paste that link and we can go ahead and authorize it here to the SQ bot testing server and I'm just going to go ahead and continue and authorize and now that we're here we should be able to actually find the bot here um, which shows that the bot is now in the server I want it to be in. All right, so that's good. Now we have a Discord bot that is on Discord and within our Discord server. So now let's go ahead and actually program it. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and join the, the server in the description below and go ahead and find the resources channel under information. And it's going to give you this message here. So what you're going to go ahead and do is you're just going to go ahead and click on packages and it's going to go ahead and show you these options. And by the time this video is up, there's going to be another section for RoboJS. What it's going to show you is a RoboJS download for both the dev toolkit and the slash command package. We're going to be using the dev toolkit in this video. So that's the option that you're going to go ahead and actually download. But we will provide a slash command package variant for any of those people out there who want to use it. So once you go ahead and click on that link that will be in the dev toolkit section, it's going to go ahead and bring you over here to this documentation page on the RoboJS website. So as you can see here, we have a documentation page. So you could download the zip file from the website, or you could go ahead and set it up using the commands within the terminal, which is what we're going to be doing because it is very simple. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is go over to our desktop and let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'm just going to go ahead and call this RoboJS tutorial, uh, but you can go ahead and give that the name of your discord bot and we can go ahead and open this up within this let's go ahead and open up our terminal we're not going to go ahead and create any files because the terminal and robojs is going to do this all for us so to open the terminal go ahead and click in this bar up top and just go ahead and type in cmd here and then you can go ahead and click enter all right so now within our terminal all we have to do is run one command it's going to be npx creates robo and we're going to go ahead and give it a name so i'm just going to do robojs tutorial uh, and we can go ahead and do two dashes. We can say template and we can do discord bot slash Mr. J awesome dash dev. And then we can do toolkit and then we can do dash JS. 
So it's kind of a long command. Um, this will also be able to be copied off of the RoboJS documentation site. But once you have all of this in here, just go ahead and click enter. So it might go ahead and take a little bit of time because it's loading, but then it's going to say welcome to RoboJS and it's going to go ahead and spawn RoboJS tutorial as a Discord bot. So it's going to go ahead and download the template and prepare the JavaScript project in using all of its dependencies. Then we're going to go ahead and be met with the credential section. So it's actually gone ahead and created a file and we can actually check this by reloading our main folder and now as you can see we have our robojs tutorial but now we want to go ahead and provide all of our information uh, as to our credentials on how we're going to actually log into this bot. So the first thing that it actually wants is the Discord client ID. So to do that, you can either get it from your Discord bot within the server, or you can go back to the developer portal. And you can go ahead and see your client information here. And you can just go ahead and click on copy. And then once you're here, you can go ahead and paste it. Then it's going to ask for your Discord token. This is going to be the first thing we did when we went ahead and created our Discord bot. If you have it saved, that's good. Otherwise, you're going to have to reset it again. So just go ahead and copy that token in here. All right, so now it's going to go ahead and say your robo is ready. So it's going to actually go ahead and give us some next steps. So we're going to go ahead and do that, but we also want to go ahead and open up our code so we can modify it and view how it all works. I would encourage you to go ahead and click on some of these links to check out the documentation, the context command slash commands, and of course the Hacktoberfest, which is a event that is made by the same people who made RoboJS. So go ahead and check that out as well. Um, but now let's actually go ahead and type code space dot into the terminal so we can actually go ahead and open up our code. All right, so the code is actually going to open up our folder, which is good, but let's actually go ahead and close out of this and we can go back over to our folder and let's actually go ahead and open it up here. So now that we're back into the folder, we have a couple of files. As you can see, we have our main file that was created, um, and then we have the bot file. So this is very similar to the slash command package or the dev toolkit package, uh, either one. Um, this one is most similar to the dev toolkit package from my team. Um, but as you can see, we have all of our files here. So just like before, let's go back over into the top and let's go ahead and type CMD. And then within this, just go ahead and do code space dot again. All right, so now we're actually in our code and we're actually in our tutorial file, which is where we wanna be. So now let's just go ahead and take a look at what we have. So on the top, we have our config, um, which is going to be just some RoboJS stuff that makes it all function. Um, this is also gonna be where your intents are. So if you wanted to allow more intents, like the guild members, guild uh, message content, or any of that, which we did already enable, you could do that here as well. And then of course we have our node modules, which is just our packages. Then we have our SRC, which is going to be our buttons, commands, events, models, schemas, and utils, just like our dev toolkit. So again, this is where you're gonna go ahead and create your commands. This is where you're gonna go ahead and create your buttons, your events, and all of that other stuff. Then after that, we have our .env. So again, in here, you have your Discord client ID, you have your Discord token, and you have your MongoDB connection URI. So we have yet to provide this, but we're gonna go ahead and do that in just a second. After that, we have the git ignore, which is again, some more RoboJS stuff. Then we have our packages and our readme, which is actually gonna go ahead and provide you a quick documentation guide on how to use this package. So if you're stuck, you can just go ahead and refer back to here. It will give you the commands you need to run and a bunch of other information here. All right, so now before we go ahead and turn our bot on, let's go ahead and add our MongoDB URL. This is going to allow us to use a database for future commands and systems within this bot. So there will be a link in the description below to find a YouTube video from me on how to create a MongoDB schema and how to set up your account and everything, as well as how to get a MongoDB URL uh, that you can actually go ahead and paste in. So go ahead and follow that tutorial after this or during this, it doesn't really matter, and go ahead and get your Mongo URL. Um, and you can just go ahead and paste that right into this section within the quotation marks. If you already have a Mongo URL, that's great. Just go ahead and send it here as well. All right, so after you've set up your Mongo URL and you have that pasted in, now we are actually set up with this whole project. So let's go ahead and open our terminal by clicking the terminal button here and selecting new terminal. And then within this, let's go ahead and run our commands to turn this on. So to run the bot locally, like you would do node space dot in a regular JavaScript project, here you can actually go ahead and do npm run dev, and it's gonna go ahead and turn your bot on locally. There is cloud hosting for RoboJS, but it's actually invite only at this time. So right now, nobody else can access it, but I think in the future, they're hoping to open open this up to others. So for now, you can go ahead and host this locally by running npm run dev, like I said. So what this is actually gonna go ahead and do is it's gonna turn on your bot and it's gonna go ahead and do a lot of things in the background, um, but it's also gonna have an auto restart system where if 
the bot detects any changes within the code files, it's going to restart your bot so that your bot is always up to date and it's working while you're programming. So let's go ahead and run this command. And as you can see, it's just going to go ahead and turn on. And as you can see, it's going to go ahead and turn on and it's going to say it's starting. Uh, and then it's going to go ahead and give me some command changes. Now my version of this package, because it's still pretty new, has an error, but it should be fixed by the time this video is up. So obviously our command changes are all of our new commands that we just created because this is the first time the bot is turning on. And then on the bottom here, as you can see, it's a Discord event. It says the event received is ready and it is online. So now if we go over to our Discord bot on Discord, as you can see, our bot is online and it's online using Dev Toolkit with Robot.js. You can change this status and I'll show you how to do that in a different video. But as of now, the bot is online and it is functional. So we should be able to run our commands here. These are all the commands that are included with the package. They're basically tutorial commands. So it's a demonstration of how you can use each system within your bot. Um, but the main one will just be ping here. And as you can see, it's just going to give you a basic reply to show you that it's working. So let's go ahead and commit a change to our bot so we can showcase the local hosting and how everything works within RoboJS. Now, one other thing in our terminal here, as you can see, it's going to say receive slash command interaction slash ping. So every time you use the commands, it's going to receive an interaction and showcase it in your console as well. All right, so to create a command, go over into your SRC and go over to commands. And I'm just going to go ahead and call this test.js. So within this, we're going to go ahead and start by importing everything from discord.js. So similar to our discord.js um, and with our dev toolkit package that I've made uh, and my team has made, you have to import these events, but you have to import them uh, using like const and then required. But all this is, is it's basically the same thing just from importations. Then we're going to go ahead and get our config ready. So we can go ahead and do export const config equals, and then we can do description equals testing. So we're basically going to go ahead and set up our description. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and create our command. So we're going to do export default async interaction. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and reply with an interaction saying testing. And we're going to go ahead and set informal to true. Now, I want you to notice, as you can see here um, in our terminal, it looks a little bit different because it actually goes ahead and restarts every time we commit a change. So for example, if I was to modify this um, and I were to go ahead and add an emoji here, just like that. Um, and I saved the file. As you can see, it's going to say change detected, restarting robo. Now, obviously, I'm going to get my error, but then it's going to go ahead and say event received ready, and it's going to be online. So like I said, as you can see, every single time the bot is on using that command npm run dev, it's going to go ahead and check for changes, which are saved files, and then it's going to restart it. So basically, while you're developing, it's always going to be restarting with your changes, so you never have to worry about turning it on. So now we should be able to open up our bot again, and we might actually have to reload our Discord. The reason you might have to do this is because we have to make sure the Discord cache updates with our new command. But after the reload, we should now have our new command, and as you can see, it's going to be slash test. Um, and it's going to have the description of testing. And if we go ahead and send it, as you can see, it's going to say testing with our emoji of choice, and it's going to be set to informal as well. All right, so that's how you can create a Discord bot using robo.js. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here, and we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, and you might as well just join anyways, because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.